You see, what the saints need to understand is you have finally, if you have trusted in Christ and you are in Christ, you have moved into a realm where love is something you have never seen. It is unconditional. You don't have to be tall and strong and wealthy. You don't have to be skinny. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to have perfect complexion. You don't have to have any. It is immutable and it is not founded upon you. It's founded upon him and his covenantal loyal love. It's founded on him. You're free. You finally walk through a door where love is utterly and entirely unconditional. Not because God dropped his standard of justice, but because he satisfied every claim of justice against you past, present and future. And you are right before him. And the most, you know, I, sometimes I remember some saints I've had to work with who just struggled with assurance. And these weren't godless people. These were people who were true saints, it seemed, but they struggled so much with assurance. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at some of them and said, dear, dear child, Jesus Christ did not die on a cross having suffered the wrath of God so that the moment you enter into heaven, the first thing you see is a scowl on his face because you failed him so many times. Don't you see that? He will be happier to see you than you will be to see him. When you see the love he has for you and the way he looks at you and his countenance toward you, when you pass through that gate, you're going to have a tendency to want to fall down and say, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. This is not right. You should not love me this way. Now you know I am not a compromising preacher. You know I am a hated man. You know I'm known for preaching hard. I'm telling you this because it's true that if you're in Christ, you see, you were in a sphere of existence, a locative of existence, a realm of existence in Adam. That was you. And in Adam, there was sin, condemnation, and death. That, is, that was your existence, your reality. That's the real world you lived in. The moment you trusted in Christ, you were no longer in Adam. How is it that you were no longer in Adam? You died in that world. You died in that realm. Say, so how did I die? You died with Christ. Christ died carrying your sin. So you died, and now that you've died, that realm can't get you anymore. Just like when the Catholic Church, you know, would kill a saint and then dig them back up again and burn them again. It's like, I don't think it bothered them that much. So you died there in Christ. All the, all the, all the sin went on Him. All the condemnation went on Him. And He died for you. Now you're dead to that realm. You don't live there anymore. It's not your reality. It's not your existence. You are now in a completely different realm. And what is that realm? It is life. It is righteousness. You're translated into another kingdom. There is no wrath. Even when your father has to discipline you, he disciplines you in love. You're free. Do you see that? In, in 2 Corinthians, look in verse 17. This text is so under-evaluated because of the way it's, it's taught. Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things pass away. Behold, new things have come. The way that is usually taught is individualistic, as we do in the West often. And what, what, what it's taught is true, but it's not big enough. What is taught is that if you're in Christ, you've been regenerated. You have a new nature. You're a new creature. That's true. That's in the text. But that's just a, a, a small part of it. What he's actually saying in the, in the text is this. If anyone in Christ, new creation. 
you have entered into the beginning of the new creation, an entirely new realm of existence that will one day be fully and completely consummated. You're in a new reality. You're in a new creation. You're in a new kingdom. And all that stuff before doesn't exist. And how does He see you in that kingdom right now as you're sitting in that pew? He sees you just as righteous as He will see you one day in heaven. Why? Christ. Christ. We failed in everything. Our elder brother exceeded in everything. He triumphed in everything. Christ. Christ. He did it all. 